we already read about the application of Schrodinger equation, the infinitely deep potential well problem, and the particle in the box. Today we are going to read the application of linear harmonic oscillator. This is also said as the quantum harmonic oscillator potential problem. Before starting the quantum one, let us first start with the Hooke's law, as we know that if you hung a body with a spring of spring, spring constant k and you displace it with an amount of x, this will give you an oscillatory motion and the formula is like this. And now with this f equals to minus kx, here you can see the solution we may expect is at like x equals to a sin omega t plus b cos omega t where this omega is the angular frequency of the oscillator and may be represented as root under k by m. So the potential field or potential energy for the particle which is oscillating may be represented as half kx square equals to half m omega square x square. So this is parabolic in nature. Now we are going to implement this potential in quantum case and we are going to solve that if a particle of mass m, momentum p, energy e with the potential of vx like this, this is a parabolic potential, then what will be the energy eigenvalue and what will be the structure of the wave function for the particle. So why we have chosen this kind of potential and what is special on this? So the answer is not very simple, but uh, for your level, just know that this kind of parabolic potential may be represented for many, uh, of course with some approximation, may be used for many of the practical cases. Therefore, this kind of potential is very important in quantum mechanics and we are going to solve it. And again, the solution is not very straightforward as we have seen for the previous cases. Here, this is the time independent Schrodinger equation. We have taken the time independent Schrodinger equation for simplicity, and that is enough to serve our purpose. Here, this is the potential function we have inserted in the Schrodinger equation. And now, one thing made to mention here that unlike the previous cases, here we can do B1, that means Vx equals to zero. Here we have this potential is not equals to zero. Therefore, as I have already mentioned, that the solution is not so straightforward. Now to solve this one, and that means to find the eigenvalue and the function, eigenfunction, what we have to do, this is we have adopted the analytic method. There were other methods also, but this method is very classical, I mean, very straightforward method. Of course, this is for quantum mechanics, but the method is classical. So, for the Schrodinger equation, this is the Schrodinger equation we have here. And uh, if you do the calculations, I mean the manipulations here, if you bring this one here, etc etc and this will look like this now here let us consider this m omega by h cross this this term as alpha so if this is alpha and xi equals to root under m omega by h cross then this will take this form because uh, here we have shown here d xi by dx etc etc and this will take the form of this equation. So to execute this one here, you see uh, this is d psi by dx and this will give you root alpha d psi by d psi. 
uh, we're actually what we are doing here we are changing this one from x to xi therefore we have assumed this one as xi i mean root under m omega by h cross of xi and this is alpha and with this uh, this equation will take the form i mean this is the d2 psi by dx2 this is a uh, size of function of x here and if we convert this this will that will give us the alpha d2 psi of my function xi d psi 2 and now with this this uh, Schrodinger equation uh, now will took the form like this and hence uh, we obtain with this the calculation so here with the, we obtain d2 psi xi d xi2 equals to equals to this we have considered i mean uh, uh, equals to k we have considered so if we bring this one in right hand side this will give us xi square minus k of psi xi where k equals to as i have mentioned 2e by h cross omega now here we are uh, this is the second order differential equation and uh, we are going to simplify this one a bit because this is our equation now for a large value of xi if xi tends to infinity actually for large value of x uh, this will be uh, this will merge to this equation because uh, for a very high value of xi k is negligible we can neglect this k here for a high value of x or xi so the probable solution for this kind of equation that this is d2 psi d a xi2 equals to xi square psi xi this uh, the probable solution may be this that this is a and b are arbitrary constants so a e to the power minus xi square by 2 plus b e to the power plus xi square by 2 now with this um, we have seen that when mod of x tends to infinity xi tends to infinity and now with this we can uh, approximate this one because this will not give us any normalizable solution and this is uh, uh, against the uh, nature of the wave function because this is not physical if you increase this one towards infinity this becomes infinitely large so we are dropping this one uh, as being unphysical and we just keep this one so with this and uh, here the that means the nature of the wave function will be uh, dependent upon the e to the power minus xi square by 2 and so we have written here that the psi xi equals to 8 xi e to the power minus xi square by 2 and this is the asymptotic form of the equation this is the form of psi also now with this psi if we do the same thing as before that this is d psi by d psi this will give us this one and d2 psi by d psi 2 will give us this this is just the differentiation over this one and this is just differentiation over this one so after this if we combine both of them here uh, i mean this is the form of the d2 xi by d xi2 and what we are doing actually we are going back to the schrodinger equation we obtained so this one this is the schrodinger equation we have reduced so if we replace the results obtained for d2 xi d xi2 and psi xi then this will look like here we have d2 xi d xi2 equals to this we are replacing it here and uh, for keeping this one the psi xi equals to 8 xi e to the power minus xi square by 2 so here you have a xi square by 2 here you have xi square by 2 so we have dropped that term and uh, the equation will take this form and with this form uh, if we reduce and uh, do the calculations this will give us that d2 8 xi d xi minus 2 xi d8 xi d xi plus k minus 1 8 xi equals to 0 so now this is our Schrodinger equation now we have to find the solution for this 
Now to find the solution, this is not very straightforward. What we have to do, we will consider the power series solution to find the structure. So the power series over xi. So we have considered h xi equals to a naught plus a one xi plus a two xi square a three xi cube and so on and we can write this one as summation over z equals to 0 to infinity a j xi z. Now, if you put 0, this will give you a naught. Put 1, a 1 xi, and so on. Similarly, d h d xi, this will give us, so differentiating over this one, this will give us a1 plus 2a2 two, two xi from here. This will give us 3a3 three xi three square. So this equals to, we may write this as z equals to 0 to infinity, summation over z equals to 0 to infinity, z, a z, xi, z minus 1. For 0, this will give us 0. For 1, this will give us a1 xi 0. For 2, this will give us 2, a2, xi 1, and so on. Similar manner, from here, if we do dd xi over this, I mean over this value, this will give us d2 h xi, d xi 2 equals to 2 a2 plus 3 into 2 a3 xi plus etc. And this may be written as z equals to 0 to infinity, z plus 1, z plus 2, a z plus 2, xi z. Now putting these values to this Schrodinger equation, this will take this following form, that z equals to 0 to infinity. So where is this Schrodinger equation? This equation. Okay, this we have. So we are just replacing d2 h xi d xi 2 here, this one, and now we have here 2 xi d h xi d xi. So 2 xi, 2 xi, this will give us xi to the power z, and so this we have kept outside. So xi to the power z, 2 z a z plus k minus 1 a z equals to 0. So that means just uh, reshuffling the terms like this, we have z equals to 0 to infinity and this xi z equals to 0. So that means we can say that this equals to this. z z plus 1, z plus 2, a z plus 2 equals to 2 z minus k plus 1 a z. Now from here we can write a z plus 2 equals to this. So this is known as recursion formula, recursion relation. Now with this, we can see that if we uh, replace this j with, we know that this j is running indices and uh, having the values of 0, 1, 2, etc. So if we test it first with the 0, so if we put here 0, a 0, this is a 2. So a 2 equals to 1 minus k by 2 a 0. Now here we have taken the even terms. So with the even terms, we can see here that this is a4 equals to 5 minus k by 12, a2 equals to 5 minus k, 1 minus k by 24, a0, and so on. So in this manner, we can find all the even numbered coefficients. And with the, for the odd number coefficients, we have to take the 1, 3, 5, etc., and that is written here. So the complete solution for this equation here we have the equation for this equation the complete solution we know the solution should be h xi so the structure must contain two things one is the h even and another is the h odd depending upon the coefficients so h even will give us this a naught a2 xi square, a4 xi4, etc. And a odd will give us a1 xi plus a3 xi cube, a5 xi5, etc. 
and this is determined in terms of two arbitrary constants a0 and a1. That means ultimately this will reduce to either a0 or to a1 that we have already seen here. Here you have. So you can always represent any of the coefficients in terms of this a0 and a1. Now uh, come back to the Rickardson relation. Now when for a very large value of z, this will reduce to, for very large value of z, so this will reduce to 2 by z az for very large value. You can see it from here that for very large value here this will be, we can neglect this one, we can neglect this two, so the here we will, we will get the z square and the uh, denominator and the numerator here you have the 2z so you can neglect this one for a very high value so this will give us 2 by j so this so aj this one therefore may be written as some arbitrary constant c by z by 2 factorial why i mean uh, uh, now next we are going to show that we are going to compare this with some exponential series that is say e to the power u square or e to the power x square whatever. So this is the series we have for the u to the power u square. So 1 plus u square uh, u square whole square by 2 factorial u square whole cube by 3 factorial and so on. So this will be u to the power l by l by 2 factorial probably you understood this one because if you see here here you have the 4 here you have 2 here you have 6 here you have 3 so this will be l if this is l this indices this that will be l by 2 therefore we have written in this manner so this the next term should be l plus 2 divided by l plus 2 plus 1 factorial and so on so if we take two consecutive coefficient ratio of the two consecutive coefficients this will give us 2 by l ultimately this will tends to and this is nothing but the nature of this 2 by z so we can say that this series may be approximated as e to the power xi square here instead of u if we place it xi here so we can say that we can approximate this one as c e to the power xi square so with this that means uh, h xi is goes like e to the power xi square then the wave function psi xi equals to h xi to the power minus xi square by 2 this we have and if h xi blows up with e to the power xi square this will give us ultimately to the power xi square by 2 because here we have the to the power xi square minus xi square by 2 will give us positive xi square by 2. So the, here again we found that the asymptotic behavior and this is a non-normalizable format. So what we have to do to get rid of this situation because we need to find the structure of the wave function. So what we can do here we have to find some ultimate, some highest j value for which the power series will truncate, will give us zero. So uh, to truncate that series, that means to um, get rid from this asymptotic behavior, we introduce this kind of logics like that, that to truncate this one, a n by two, say, what is n, say for n z equals to n the series truncated then a n by 2 equals to 0 and then this logical deduction give us h even xi or h odd xi with other one as 0 that means the other term as 0 we know that the h xi is nothing but a combination of h even plus h odd so whenever we are starting this h even the odd coefficient will start with 0 and whenever we are considering the odd, then the even coefficients will start with 0. This is the logic. So, for z equals to n, n is the highest value for which the series will truncate. And this a, z plus 2 equals to 0, this will give us the form a n 2n plus 1 minus k 
n plus 1, n plus 2 equals to 0. So, if uh, one word of, uh, um, I am telling you that if uh, it is hard to follow, uh, may it may happen that uh, I am telling you continuously, showing one by one slides. So, if it is hard to follow, just pause this video, go back to the previous, I mean, go back to the uh, previous slides and see there what was the solution, what was the form of the equation, or you may do it in form of you just have to take a uh, pen and paper and just write the um, form we obtained, stepwise we obtained for the Schrodinger equation or the recursion relation that will help you a bit to understand these things uh, uh, at particular instance, okay. So, here n equals to 2n plus 1 minus k, n plus 1, n plus 2 equals to 0. And we already have told you, I'm just going to show you here again the recursion relation this. So if the series truncated for a j equals to a, a n, I mean j equals to n, and uh, this equals to 0, a sub a 2 equals to 0, that means k should be, k should be my 1, here we have minus k, so just, just remember this one and I am going back there. So here, so k should be 2n plus 1, so minus k, minus 2n minus 1. So that will make the numerator 0, that will make the numerator 0, minus 1 minus 2n for this case, okay. So, a n plus 2 will be 0. And now, with that value, we, if we uh, think about the, uh, uh, what we have considered for k, this is 2 e by h cross omega, then 2 n plus 1 equals to 2 e by h cross omega, and this will give you, readily this will give you e n, this is the running indices suffix, I have put it suffix as a suffix. So this equals to h cross omega n plus half, whereas n has the integral values that is 0, 1, 2, etc. And these are the energy eigenvalues of the quantum harmonic oscillator. So we found the form of the energy eigenvalues for the quantum harmonic oscillator with n equals to 0, 1, 2, etc. So the ground state for the quantum harmonic oscillator must be half h cross omega. That is not a zero state. That may be named as zero state, but that is not a zero energy state. Remember this. And this is similar as the other applications which you already read about the infinitely deep potential well and the particle in a box. And now again, come back here in the recursion relation. Just what we have done, we have um, given, we have written the highest value for j and this is the normal general formula. So 2j plus 1 minus 2 and minus 1. So this is the general formula I am talking about. This is not for the nth state. What you have seen for the deduction of this, that is for the nth state itself. Therefore, we have replaced the j with n. But this is not the nth state. This is the general form. And when j equals to n, this will give you 0. Now here, this equals to minus 2 n minus j, j plus 1, j plus 2, a j. Now if n equals to 0, that means for the ground state, j equals to 0, a1 equals to 0 to kill h odd term and z equals to 0 will give you what? This will give you a2. So a2 will be 0. Now with that, that means n equals to 0, z equals to 0 will give you a2 equals to 0. Now with this, we can write h not. H not here we have hn xi. We must say here we have Instead of simple h xi, we have written here, simple h xi, we have written here, this is n, h n xi, now n equals to 0, so this will give us a, a 0. And similarly, xi 0, 
psi 0 xi equals to a naught e to the power minus xi square by 2 and so on. And here again, if you take n equals to 1, the first excited state with a naught equals to 0, z equals to 1, a3 equals to 0. Just uh, with this logic, so if you do it, you will get these things. So h1 xi equals to a1 xi and psi 1 equals to a1 xi to the power minus xi square by 2. Similarly, when n equals to 2, z equals to 0, a2 equals to minus 2 a naught, z equals to 2 gives a4 equals to 0 and so you will get this form. So combining all these and normalizing the solution, normalizing the values, you can, uh, for the coefficient, you will get the psi n x equals to m omega pi h cross whole to the power 1 fourth, 1 upon root under 2 to the power n, n factorial h n xi e to the power minus xi square by 2, where this h n xi is known as hermite polynomial. This is hermite polynomials. This hermite polynomials, uh, here we haven't shown the solutions how to solution and now here you have this is the structure of the wave function we obtained for the quantum harmonic oscillator now we are going to show you the structure of the wave function for different n values here the plot the first plot this is the parabolic potential function and here we have plotted the psi n. The psi n, this is the first for n equals to 0. This is the ground state. This is the first excited state, second excited state and the third excited state. In the right hand side of the figure, the same this one is the Vx, we have the potential function parabolic, and these are the structure of the probability density for the same wave function. Here, these are the structure of the wave function for ground, first excited, and so on. This is the probability density for the ground, first excited, second excited, and the third excited state. And now, loosely, these are the reference book for reading and suggestions. This is a very useful book, the Griffith, Quantum Mechanics, Quantum Mechanics for the Ajay Ghatak and Loknathan, Mechanics for the Eisberg Resnick, and of course, R. Sankar. This is a very, very good book. So you can study these things. Thank you.